Hello, welcome to episode 26 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing and whatever other making I happen to be doing at the moment, which takes place here in my home, which is by the lake and just outside of Toronto in Canada. I feel like I haven't been here in ages and I've missed podcasting, but things have just been a little bit busy. I had a little bit of a cold, which was not a big deal, but it just kind of um, took the wind out of me and I was so tired. And then one of my boys got sick and there's just been lots going on with school and life. So that's where I have been. I have been really busy knitting, which you can probably see. And if you follow me on Instagram, you have already seen because I have been posting this like a mad woman. Um, if you're looking for me elsewhere, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Sandy Ran. Um, I also have an Etsy shop where I sell project bags and very soon we'll have some leather and canvas pouches. That is Sandy by the Lakeside on Etsy. And I have a website where you can pretty much find links to everywhere that I am, which is bythelakeside.com. Um, I also have a blog there. It's been a little neglected these last few weeks but I am planning on a couple of posts. I recently got an instant pot, which is totally not knitting related, but I've had a lot of questions and a lot of interest in it. And so I am gonna do a blog post over there on my website and um, just kind of link to a lot of the amazing recipes that I have found because I am using that instant pot more than I ever thought I would and we are loving it. So I thought I would share that on my blog. But today I have lots of knitting to share with you and I have give a giveaway winner to announce a little bit later for the uh, giveaway that I mentioned on my last podcast. So why don't we just get started with some knitting content. Uh, my second Avenue shawl is complete and blocked and ready to be worn and I am absolutely over the moon in love with it. I think it might be one of my favorite pieces that I've ever made. Um, I'm just so happy with how it turned out and the colors, how it feels because it's the plucky uh, Primo fingering which has a little bit of cashmere in it. It's really, really soft. It's totally my style and I can see myself wearing this so much. So that's what kind of kept me going. It is, um, it's not a hard knit, it's really easy. Um, it gets a little monotonous in a couple of spots. I found it was a little monotonous in this section here because it's quite um, a big block. And then you do have to go back um, and do it again, a little bit shorter. But overall, I just love it. So I followed the pattern completely. It is the Second Avenue Wrap by Amy Miller. I have all of the yarn colors listed on my project page in Ravelry if you're interested. It's all plucky um, and I don't remember all of the colors. I know that this one was Tiny Bubbles, this one was Urban, and the rest I can't quite remember. But I have had a lot of questions about plucky. I don't really know a lot about them and how to order and how to get the colors that you're looking for. Um, I was really fortunate that my sweet friend Meg, who has a huge plucky stash, her and I did a little bit of a swap or a trade and I got to pick out from her stash. So that was really amazing. Thank you so much, Meg. Um, Meg has the Wool and Cookies podcast, which is really great. So I feel very lucky that I was able to pick out, um, I was able to pick out the colors that I totally loved and I also had um, a lot of questions about how I picked and I was thinking about it and a lot of times when I find a pattern that I love I usually fall in love with it because of um, colors that I've seen it in and for this one it was really the colors in the pattern um, like in the photos that come with the pattern I loved the impact that it had and the colors and so what I did was I kind of based it off of that and um, they had used a speckle where I did, so I kind of found a neutral speckle that I loved. They had a vibrant color, um, and so, and I think they had a gray, I don't remember if it was navy, but I just kind of modeled it after the original one in the pattern, and then just picked the versions of the colors that I loved and I thought 
went well together. So like this mustardy yellow is just beautiful. It's got a lot of um, different kind of tones in there. And uh, one end has this beautiful scalloped edge, which is really pretty. And the other end has a pico edge, which I have never done before. And it wasn't difficult, but I definitely had to look that up and I made a mistake. Um, I just read the pattern wrong and wasn't really paying attention. I think I was so excited to get it finished that I just made a mistake and I had to rip back the edging and redo it. But in the end, I think it turned out beautifully. Um, I wove in all the ends and then I um, soaked it in my favorite wash, which is, I'm gonna show you actually. My favorite wool wash right now is um, this Rapture. It smells like jasmine and, um, oh yeah, it's by, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Eucalan. I got this from Espace Trico. It's really sunny, but um, I love the smell of this one. It's so fresh and beautiful. And I think, yeah, this one has jasmine oil. So that's um, a scent I really, really like. And then I blocked it and just made sure that I pinned out all of the scallops and the pico edges and I stretched it just a little bit because it did seem to um, curl in a lot at the sides, but I really, really am loving it. I think this is my favorite color, this beautiful kind of magenta, magenta color here. So yeah, it's taken me a while. I put it on break a little bit over Christmas and just got back to it and finished it because I really, really wanted to wear it. So super happy that that is done and um, it's definitely going to be in heavy rotation in my wardrobe for sure. So believe it or not, and I'm sure you've seen this if you follow me on Instagram as well, but I finished something else. Shocking. I've just been on a knitting roll. I think I've been, um, because I've been working on a lot of new products, as soon as I finished my last shop update, which was a really big one, and I was exhausted. I did a lot of sewing and pressing and packaging, and it was, it was amazing, but I was really, really tired. So I decided to, um, while I wasn't feeling well and had my cold, decided to just immerse myself in some knitting, which was really nice. And then it kind of turned into an extra week I needed of just a little bit more rest, and I think my mind just needed a break. I was also working on some of my new products for the shop, so between research and sourcing some new materials, I finished the Getting Warmer Cowl by Espace Trigot. I'm just gonna slip it on and hope that it doesn't look crazy with my hair. But this is a really beautiful, fast knit, something I also can see myself wearing a lot. It's really, really pretty. Um, the only modification I made to this was it um, should have been in a garter stitch, which I actually loved the look of, but I think with all the purling I was doing on um, the other project, the Second Avenue Wrap, I'm not a huge fan of purls, so I just decided to do stockinette, so I just knit every row in the round. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with how it looks. I think it's really pretty. I'm loving the yarn. I'm trying to remember where I put all of my bands because I finished this one a couple weeks ago. So let me just check. Okay, I found the yarn that I used for this. And I had seen on the Nice and Knit um, I think it was in their first podcast, which is really excellent. If you haven't checked that out, they just started doing a podcast, podcast and it's really, really good. I love everything that they make. I love their yarn, and I was really anxious to try a project with some of their yarn. So on the podcast and also on, in, on their Instagram feed, um, one of the sisters had done a beautiful version of this using their worsted weight yarn wrapped with um, or combined with a fingering. So I wanted to give that a try. I picked up some of their worsted. This is the Nice and Knit Worsted 100% Superwash Merino. And this is the color Nutmeg. And I ended up doubling it with a Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles 
in bubble. Just really fun. I really like how it turned out. It adds a little bit of color, but it's not too crazy for me. I think it's really pretty. So here, I'll show you that a little bit more closely. Turned out really pretty. It was a really fun pattern to knit. Um, I do have a project page for this also um, because I've put the needles away and I can't remember what size needle I used for this. Um, but I really just followed what uh, the Nice and Knit project page had on theirs. So you should check that out too. They've got beautiful combinations of um, yarn colors in their um, Ravelry project pages and on Instagram. I'm going to slip this off because it's really warm. So those two finished objects um, I've really been focused on. I've been totally monogamous and um, I've been really enjoying my knitting time and just spending a lot of time with them. So as soon as that was done, um, I wanted to partake in a knit along that I had seen mentioned on Instagram and I've popped it in this bag. It is a knit along that Candice from the Transitory podcast is doing. She has a stripy sock knit along that I believe she does every year, but I haven't, um, I haven't done participated in it before. And I really wanted to, even though I know I shouldn't be casting on any more socks. I had this bag set aside for my last update that I love. And I had this beautiful yarn from Scrumptious Pearl which is the colorway Palm Springs, and it's the Stripe Me Up base. So I had to, I just had to. I started this the other night. It is going on right now. I think it started on April 1st, and I can't remember when it ends, but I have just been loving this mindless knit after um, finishing my wrap. I'm really happy with this. This is a beautiful color, and um, I did a little bit more rows of the ribbing because I think I, I like the look of that a lot more. I think I did about 20 rows. So it's a little bit longer for me. Um, and I'm not going to make this super long. Um, I think I might just do a couple more stripes and then, um, and then do the heel. So I really, really love the colors in this one. I think this is the perfect spring uh, or introduction to spring sock for me. And I'm kind of hoping that with the way that I've been knitting, which is really focusing on one project at a time, that I'm gonna get this first one done super fast, cast on the second one right away, um, and just try to get this one done. I think soccer season is going to pick up a little bit more again. Um, indoor soccer slowed down, and in the next couple weeks we'll be spending more time at soccer, so this will be the perfect project for that. The only other, um, actually no, not the only other one, but my other whip right now, I've shown before and it's in this beautiful bag from the Fat Squirrel. I'm obsessed with this bag, it's so pretty. And this is my Patiki cowl, which you have seen. And I think I did just a little bit more since my last podcast. Um, I might have done a little bit more and then kind of jumped over to those two items that I finished, but I thought I would share because I'm still in love with this project. It's so beautiful. And um, I'm gonna try to get a little bit more work done on this one as well. This is um, the Patiki Cowl by Aroha Knits. And the yarn that I'm using is the Jasper DK Base from Primrose Yarn. And it's gorgeous. It's so like spongy and I really enjoy working with it. I think it's also giving the cowl a really great um, definition in the pattern. I'm just really enjoying this project. So I do have a bigger project in mind that I'd like to start, but I'm kind of hoping that I might do just a little bit more of this to keep it going in between or before I start the other one because I think I'm not a super fast knitter, but when I have too many projects going, nothing seems to get done and then I sort of feel discouraged and don't knit as much. So I probably shouldn't even be looking at this right now because I have one of those languishing whips that has been around for years, years, but I love it. And I've shown it before, but it's not going anywhere because I really need to work on it. And I think it's going to be, um, 
it's kind of like my version of a blanket. You know when you have one of those big projects and it just kind of sits somewhere and you can always pick it up. It's really easy. But it is, um, what is this one called? It's been so long I can't even remember. It's a pattern from the Pearl Bee, which is Pearl Soho. And it's called the Gradient Cowl. So it's another colorful, beautiful pattern. It's really simple. You don't have to think much at all. It's just a seed stitch or a moss stitch. Um, it's a little bit crumpled up because it's been, like I said, sitting in this bag for months and months and actually years. So every once in a while I pick it up. I usually pick it up in the spring just because of these colors. They're so beautiful. So gorgeous. Pink. Oops, they always fall everywhere because I have two balls of each color. Talked about it before. I won't um, go on about it, but it is still in my big bento bag that I got from the field um, from Fringe Supply Company. So that is kind of a project that I was thinking about again, and it would be really nice if I finished that one for maybe for the end of summer when you wanna have something like, and it's starting to get cool at night. Um, I think that would be a really great piece for my wardrobe too. So that's not going anywhere. I'm just not sure how much time I wanna spend on it because I do have my next knitting project lined up. I'm really excited about this. I didn't expect to be um, doing this. I had a few other projects that I thought I might get to. But again, my friend Meg, tempted me. She sent me a photo, I think. I'm just going to pull up a photo because I don't have a color picture. This is the next shawl that I really want to cast on. It is by Isabel Kramer. It's so beautiful. It is called A Girl's Best Friend. And I've already found some yarn, purchased it. I've popped it into one of my large project bags. Um, which is really fun and kind of matches. So I will show you the colors that I chose. I haven't wound them up yet. I think I might wind them up um, later today. Today is Sunday and maybe start it this week. So I kind of loved, like I said before, I fell in love with this a lot for a few reasons. So one is because it looks really dense and I liked that look. Um, it doesn't look as drapey as some wraps so I really thought this pattern would be um, a nice change for me and I also loved the colors so again I kind of I didn't um, I didn't search for the exact yarns because I didn't recognize them or I don't think I could find them like locally so I just kind of picked colors from a couple of uh, one one order I made with Espace Tricot and one order I made um, with a yarn shop in Toronto because they didn't have the colors. So basically, these are my colors. I really wanted that rusty kind of, I think in the photo it looks a little more mustard, but I, I loved this beautiful color. It is called Ginger and it's the Tosh Merino Light by Madeline Tosh. I think it's really, really gorgeous. Then I loved it with sort of a pale washed out pink. I'm not usually a pink person, but I saw this one. They look a little bit different, but I kind of like that. This is also Madeline Tosh in the Twist Light. And this color is, hmm, I forget the name, Scout. So it's sort of like a, a really washed out muted pink. So these two I had to order online to get the two of them. And I think they look really good with that. And then the last one I also ordered, this one was from Espace Tricot and so is this one. It is Julie Asselin in Fino, which is a Merino cashmere silk blend. It's beautiful. This one's also from Espace Tricot and the color is Broom. And in the photo it looked, um, a little more gray and in person it's kind of like a mauvey gray which is also really pretty kind of matches my nails so I think um, so it's gonna start with the pink and there's gonna be this gray sort of in the middle and then it's sort of trimmed with this beautiful coppery gold I love it 
excited about that one, but I'm kind of torn too because I do have a couple things that I would love to finish first, but this one I think is calling me. So I'm just giving myself a few days of a break to work on my sock and, um, and then I think I'm gonna cast this on this week. So that is my dream knitting. Um, I think that's it for knitting this week. I have, um, like I said, I have been working on pouches and I know I've been showing them for a while and it's just taking me a really long time to um, just finesse all the details. I had some supplies to order, some things to kind of master and perfect because when I do something, I kind of, I do it all. I don't want to just do a couple and post a couple in the shop. Um, so I ended up having a really amazing, um, what do I call it? It's like an embossing plate made, I guess, like a brass stamp is what it is, um, incorporating a symbol that's in, or not a symbol, but these scissors that are in my logo on my business cards. So um, I bought an Arbor Press to kind of emboss and like push it into the leather. And then I also got a soldering iron, which will kind of brand that into some leather. So I was really excited about this detail on the leather pouches. Um, I'm going to be um, embossing it or um, on the back. So you just have a little, a little pair of scissors on your leather pouch and on some of the canvas pouches. This is, um, this is one of the ones that I finally perfected and got exactly the way I wanted it. Um, I put the little tab in there too. So I'm really loving this. I'm really happy with it. It's just taken me a long time to work out the sizes I wanted to do and source the right thread to be using with leather, all that kind of stuff. So I'm getting there. I'm enjoying the process, but it's just taking me a little bit longer than I had hoped. So the leather is going to be a little bit pricey, obviously, because the leather costs a lot more than canvas or any kind of fabric. Um, and there's a lot of waste when you're working with leather. And it's also a lot more time consuming to sew. Um, so the, the production of it takes a lot longer. So I decided to kind of do um, a few options in the canvas because I think these are great too. And um, if the leather is not in your price range, then a canvas one would also be really great to kind of pop in your purse or travel with. So that's why I did these. And then as I was thinking about that, I was totally tempted by some new fabrics and I thought these would be also really beautiful in some pouches. So I've got these fabrics that I plan on uh, making some pouches with. And of course, the way that I think is, <laughs> then I thought, well, why not do also like a toiletry or a wash bag? Because this one is just, I'm, I'm in love with it. And I actually um, kind of want one for myself. And I want to have a metal zipper and just kind of put my makeup in one of these. So I'm thinking about that too. But again, I, I'm not sure of the timeline right now. If you are interested in them, I'm sorry I've kept you waiting. I've had quite a few messages about them, but if you follow me on Instagram, that's probably the best place that you can find out when I am ready to post them, just in case I don't have um, another podcast by the time I do do that. And speaking of podcasts, I feel really bad because I just have gotten out of the groove of doing them and I've really missed them. And so I didn't even feel like doing it today. I just kind of want to, I think it's this time of year. I just want to sit on the couch and kind of, I'm waiting for spring. I'm just knitting. I'm thinking about the big spring cleanup around the house. Of a million things on my to-do list but I don't feel like doing a lot but I just forced myself today but as I was prepping and pulling all of my stuff out for this podcast I was thinking about the vlogging again and I really love vlogging and there's so many little things that I want to share so I think I'm going to really try really really try my best to um, put up a vlog once in a while to share some of my favorite things that I sometimes do in the podcast too. Um, I've picked up some really neat or really beautiful makeup or products. Um, just what I'm reading. I got a new purse recently and then I thought I might even do a, like in that vlog, show you my new purse and what I put in my pouches in my purse because I think that's kind of fun. 
And then that way you can see all of that content on a vlog. So I'm hoping, really hoping, that I can get to that very soon. All right, next up. I have not been, um, I've been trying not to do like a haul video or a portion of my videos anymore and just kind of show you things as I get them because sometimes it feels awkward, but um, there's something I really, really wanted to share and I didn't purchase it. It was a beautiful gift or a swap that I did with my lovely friend Gaina, who is um, from the podcast Tales from the Coo Tales from the Cuckoo Nest? I think that's it. Oh my gosh, it totally went blank for a minute. But she is Cuckoob on Instagram and I adore her. She is so much fun. And she just sent me some beautiful stuff that she has made and recently put into her Etsy shop. So I wanted to share in case um, you wanted to show her some love in her shop. And look at this. This is just stunning. It is a needle case, which I am super excited about. And it's so soft and really, really um, totally my style. It's just gorgeous. And I cannot wait to, um, to put my needles in here. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. I have a little mini case for my sock needles, which I adore. And um, I have lots of random DPNs. So it could be for my DPNs or it could be for one of my circular sets because I really don't like the cases that they come in. So I haven't decided yet which set to put in here, but it's really, really beautiful. I am just loving it. So thank you so much, Gaina. It was such a beautiful surprise um, in the package. I love this fabric. I'm really, really in love with it. And along with that, she did a beautiful DPN cozy. And there's her label there. Really, really pretty. And she also did these, which I am a huge fan of as of late. Because when you're doing a project with multiple yarns, and they're getting tangled in your project bag or basket. These are really great to kind of put, let's see, put your ball of yarn in and tie it up or snap the button. And then it's not getting tangled and rolling around and you know, it's just really handy. So she sent me a couple of those, which are really, really cute. And of course I love it because they all match. And she sent me one of these lotion bars. I love these and I love the lemongrass scent. So, so beautiful. So I'm keeping this next to my knitting spot because my hands have been so dry lately. She also sent me some other little goodies which I've already started using and they're not in here, but of course she sent me yarn and I have never, um, I've never tried this yarn. This is the Stranded Dye Works yarn and it's also a beautiful soft gray which I think is perfect for me. I don't know why I always put things like up here. It is, uh, the colorway is called First Frost. Oh it's a um, BFL and bamboo blend. That's really nice. So that is um, from Stranded Dye Works in the UK which is Amy, um, Amy Florence I believe. Love that. So thank you so much, Gaina. So excited to get all of your beautiful goodies. And I hope my package arrives soon. Okay, I think that leaves us to the giveaway that I had spoken about in the last podcast. It was a 5,000 subscriber giveaway. And just in the last few days, it kind of goes up and down a few people, but I've actually gotten to 6,000. So I'm actually going to do two. Um, I drew two names just because I thought, why not? Um, I will start out. So in the last podcast, I showed the prize would be uh, one of my By the Lakeside bags, along with this beautiful fingerless knit pattern from Kay, Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady. She just does the most beautiful patterns. And this one I love because it's, um, based on the same pattern that she created for the Rhinebeck Rumi kit that we did back in the fall. So this is the Rhinebeck is Calling Fingerless Mitts. 
so you will also receive a digital copy of this pattern and some other little goodies that I will pop into the package when it comes time. So um, I can't remember how many we had. There were quite a few. There was just under 500 entries. So the first one that I picked was using the random, I did it off camera because I am a bit of a fumbler with things and I wanted to get the name and all that stuff. So. I used the random number generator on my phone and the first one I drew was number 285, which um, on Ravelry is Knit Knot 56. So that is Jillian. So congratulations, Jillian from Ontario. You are going to receive a digital copy of Kay's pattern and one of my bags. So I will send you a message, Jillian, on Ravelry, but if you do get this, check that out, and then you'll have to send me your address so that I can send out a package to you. So because, um, because it also grew and I noticed we were at 6,000, I decided to draw another number. So the second number I drew was number 323, and that is Viv Crest, who is Viv. So congratulations, Viv from New Jersey. Um, I decided to also pull aside or grab one of my project bags to send you. And the beautiful Nina Phillip from The Knitting Expat, she was so generous and sent me a, a copy of her beautiful new pattern, which is the Changes Shawl. And also she sent one for me and she sent one for one of you. So I'm gonna send this one along with this bag. And um, I don't think the shawl will fit in here, but that's okay. You can put a smaller project in here and you will get this digital copy of this gorgeous pattern from Mina. Um, I'm sorry that it's only in black and white because it looks so beautiful. You need to go and check this out on Ravelry. It's just stunning. The colors in here, um, it's a really beautiful, beautiful pattern. I was so excited when Mina sent this to me. Um, I don't have it um, planned just yet because it is quite a big one. And after my second Avenue wrap, I think I'm gonna try a triangular shawl. And then I think maybe um, if I can finish that other one, this would be a great one at the end of the, or in the middle of the summer to cast on. It's just gorgeous. And look at how beautiful Mina looks in this picture. I love it. So that one, that package will be for Viv and I'll also throw in a couple of little bits and whatever I can um, add to that package as a thank you and thank you to everyone who um, entered in the giveaway. I wish I had something to send everyone. <laughs> it is so much fun to do giveaways, but I do have, um, I do have a couple of other patterns that people have been so generously sending to me. So that is so fabulous and I am going to think of something else maybe for the next the next podcast and then I might do uh, a few more giveaways coming up. It's just I don't have any more bags right now. So um, thank you so much to everyone who subscribes. I am really, really thankful uh, for all of you. And I was drawing these, um, these winners today and thinking about all of you and how many there are now. And it just made me feel bad that I haven't podcasted in a while, but um, you know, sometimes family comes first and your health comes first. And I've just been trying to um, take better care of myself this year since I am home and it's, you know, I'm able to do that. So thank you so much to everyone that has supported my shop and is a subscriber here. I am so thankful and um, I'm gonna do a few more giveaways maybe next time and um, I'm gonna start gathering some more goodies. And every time I'm doing a big shop update now, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna put a bag or two aside and just keep them for um, upcoming giveaways. I think that covers everything. I'm really hoping to do a little bit of vlogging soon and I really hope that it won't take me as long to be back here for the next podcast. But I hope you are all doing well and have a wonderful April, and I thank you for being here, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.